Hi, welcome to the EEV blog. I'm your host, Dave Jones, and this is episode number 20. Now, as what's usually the case, I was going to talk about something else. But there's been a lot of uh, talk recently, a lot of feedback. I've had a lot of feedback on the um, blog I did not so long ago on a rather unusual oscilloscope phenomenon where I stood up from my chair and I generated a, um, a static impulse into a, an oscilloscope probe and it appeared on the oscilloscope. And there were so many people uh, claiming that I got it all wrong. And what was actually happening was the, um, the loop, the actual loop on the, the ground probe loop on the oscilloscope probe is the thing that was picking up the signal. And, uh, well, I made the claim that it wasn't. And this is true. And I'll demonstrate it again without this loop and I'll show you that it's actually being picked up by the probe itself and not by this loop. The loop certainly helps, but it's, uh, it's not um, the main contributor to the pickup. Um, well, it's, you can actually get it with just the probe. So let me demonstrate. Okay, I've got my oscilloscope set up and first let's see if we can try and recreate the same problem. I've got my crow probe uh, shorted like that and everyone knows that's not a true shorted RF, but I did this just an example to show that, uh, you know, the probe was actually, um, that it was actually shorted because your average uh, user, you know, doesn't expect anything on the crow when it's shorted. So let's try and reproduce the problem. I'll put it down on the bench and let's go, trigger, and I stand up whoop, and bingo, I've captured exactly the same thing. I captured last time. Okay, that's one volt per division. Okay, one volt per division there. Let's try it again. This time, I'm going to disconnect the ground lead and just have the crow probe on its own. This is the times 10. It's on the times 10 position. Let's put it down there again. And let's try this again. Run. Here we go. Stand up, and bingo, we got it again. But it's much smaller in amplitude, as you can see. As you'd expect, that's uh, 200. That's actually actually 0.2 volts per division, but you can see it's a similar response. So I'll just try that again, see if we can duplicate that, and bingo. No? Nope. Okay, let's try it again. There we go, I got another one. This is a rather unusual looking one, but um, once again, you get a response. No ground loop. Okay, now let's try it again, but this time I'm gonna get some alfoil, okay? A little bit of aluminium foil. I'm gonna wrap it around the top of the uh, probe like that. Okay, so it's making contact, it's shorted out. Okay, I'm going to do it again. I'm going to put the crow probe down like this, and I'm going to set up the trigger and stand up, and bingo, there it is again with a shorted probe. It's got nothing to do with the ground loop, or well, the ground loop actually helps, but it's not the main contributor. It's being picked up by the coax, by the probe. It's not the ground loop. There you go. I hope I cleared up that myth. Okay, and if you're still not happy, I'm going to show you another way you can get it as well. I think I mentioned this in the last blog, actually. You can get it using a standard coax. Here's a coax cable. I won't use a uh, crow probe at all. Standard coax. Plug it in. Let's have a look at this. Set the trigger and stand up and Bingo, there you go. Once again, standard, it's just a standard unterminated coax. And I know what you're thinking. Okay, it's unterminated. So, let's run that same test again, but let's put on a 50 ohm terminator and see what happens. Standard coax, 50 ohm terminator. Watch this. Start again and 
Bingo! We still get it. There it is. 50 ohm terminated coax cable. You still get it. You don't think it's being picked up by the coax? <laughs> think again. And I'd also like to clear up some other uh, things people have been saying too. They criticised, um, some people criticised my use of a 100 megahertz scope to measure a 100 megahertz signal. Fair enough. And, um, but this is the only one I had to hand. I just wanted to demonstrate the effect. But you can get exactly the same effect and it is sinusoidal. Um, well, usually, it depends on the, how, it, um, how it actually manifests itself, but it's, it is sinusoidal. It is around 120, 120, 100, 120 megahertz mark, and you can see it clearly. I've, uh, I actually uh, got exactly, I first uh, found this effect on a 300 megahertz scope. So it's, you know, it's got nothing to do with the bandwidth of the scope. The higher, the better, of course, but I just use this one to demonstrate. And also, there's um, some people have said, oh, I've got something unique in my uh, workshop here, you know, something, or it might be specific to this particular scope. No, I've had the same thing on many different types of oscilloscopes, many different bandwidths, many different types of uh, crow probes, different uh, coax cables, and all sorts of things. And um, yeah, I, the effect is seems to be quite high here. I seem to generate quite large uh, voltages. Um, my uh, current um, desk at work, I, I don't seem to get the effect much at all. It's very difficult to reproduce. Um, but in my old lab at my old company, it was really easy, where I first found it in multiple locations, um, different benches, I found it. And it was, you know, it, I seem to be able to get this pretty easy. A lot of people having trouble. Maybe it's, the, I don't know, the humidity, something, something to do with the strayer. I don't know. Maybe it only works down under. Who knows? But yeah, I can get it. There's nothing unique about this bench at all. It's, um, I've seen the effect many, many places. And of course, my main uh, point about showing this originally in the blog was um, not only because it's interesting, but also um, was to actually demonstrate that uh, this effect can actually happen while you're actually measuring something and you think it might be your circuit at fault when it's not. It's actually your you know, injecting static charge into your um, uh, cable, into your uh, probe cable, and it makes it look like it's coming from your circuit, when it's actually not. So, it's just be something to be wary of. So, there you go. I hope that generates some more controversy.